Hey class, this is Juan Ramirez for EE2715, Circuits 2, Transients, and today we'll be talking about Second Order Circuits, and that's Chapter 8 in the book. So what is a second order circuit? Similar to what we covered last time, which were first order circuits, um, we can model certain types of circuits with a second order differential equation. For first order circuits, those first order differential equations used to model the circuit um, it would be modeled in a circuit that would have one energy storage element, such, a, such as a capacitor or an inductor, and one resistor, or an equivalent, you know, some equivalent resistance. That's why we would, you know, look at where that capacitor and inductor was, turn off all of our sources, and find the Thevenin resistance, because it was that equivalent resistance. In the same way, uh, we have circuits that may contain both a capacitor and an inductor as well as that resistor and that's when you you model it with a second order differential equation you could also have a second order differential equation to model a circuit that has two inductors or two capacitors so it doesn't have to be one and one what we'll usually see in this class as well as um, typically in practice when we're analyzing circuits we're modeling uh, with a sec second order Diffie Q, um, an RLC circuit. That's a re uh, circuit with a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor. So I'm just going to write down that definition for you. Again, a second order circuit consists of two energy storage elements, therefore it's characterized or modeled by a second order differential equation. Um, before we get into the actual modeling of second order differential equations, one thing the book does, which uh, I think is a good idea, is to take some time to really understand how to determine initial conditions. When you are analyzing these RLC circuits, which are the second order circuits, um, you'll need to know the initial conditions, which was also true for our first order circuits, our, um, the RL circuits or the RC circuits that we would analyze, we would always look for that initial capacitor voltage or that initial inductor current. And that was uh, a requirement in order to find that final equation that was modeling the response of the capacitor voltage or the inductor current to some step input. This is still true. However, there's another initial condition. Now you're going to have two initial conditions. And that other initial condition requires taking a derivative of that initial inductor current or capacitor voltage. So let's talk a little bit more about this and then do a few examples.
Okay, chapter 8.2, finding initial and final values. So again, second order circuits. require two initial conditions. Such as initial capacitor voltage or let's say and or initial inductor current. Um, so let's recall that the most important inductor equation that we don't ever want to forget is V is equal to L V I V T. So that is the voltage across an inductor is equal to the inductance times the rate of change of the current. Um, and using that equation, we can deduce that the inductor current we call IL, can't change instantaneously. And then we also have uh, the similar capacitor equation that says the current through a capacitor is equal to the capacitance times the rate of change of the voltage. And that equation tells you that the capacitor voltage can't change instantaneously. Okay, therefore, once we remember that, we can say that the initial, oops, let's go back, here we go, sorry about that, therefore, the initial inductor current is equal to the inductor current right before the transition. So that transition is when either the switch closed or opened, or when, uh, if you had a step input, when you actually had the step response, uh, or the input changed from uh, high to low, or low to high, whatever the different states of the step input are. That's the current before the transition. And we're saying that because the inductor current can change instantaneously, the inductor current right after the transition, that's what the little plus signifies, um, that's equal. It can't change instantaneously, so right before and right after the transition, assuming the transition happens instantaneously, that inductor current is still the same. And the same thing goes for the capacitor voltage. Right before and right after the transition, the capacitor voltage will be the same. Okay, and I'm going to reiterate that T equal to zero negative with the little negative at the top means right before transition. And 
T equal to zero plus means right after transition. <clears throat> so before we considered when looking at initial conditions we would look at t less than zero that was that initial state And when, and when we said that, we said um, it was way before the transient, way before the transition, such that the value of the inductor current and the capacitor voltage was at steady state. It wasn't changing. So way before transient. And we also would take a look at as time approached infinity, that would be the final state. And that would be way after transition. So now, we'll also consider time equal to zero plus. And we'll call it right after transition. Okay. So the values we want to look for could be it could be the inductor current right after transition which is also equal to the inductor current right before the transition because of the fact that the inductor current doesn't change instantaneously. The capacitor voltage right after transition, again, equal to the capacitor voltage right before it. The rate of change of the inductor current right after transition, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Rate of change of the capacitor voltage right after transition, and then final inductor current, final, in uh, final capacitor voltage. Now, note that um, we're saying I and V. I'm not necessarily identifying it as IL or VC. Just know that um, from here on out, Whenever we say little i, if it doesn't have a subscript, it implies it's an inductor current. And if you have little v, if it doesn't have a subscript, it implies it's capacitor voltage. Um, I'll try to be thorough in most of my examples and what I cover, uh, but just note that. And when you look at the book and maybe you use it to review uh, some of these concepts, you'll, you'll see that. I, no subscript, is inductor current. V, no subscript, is capacitor voltage. Okay, so for I, oh, I of zero plus and V of zero plus, we're going to analyze circuit at initial state.
And when we do that, we're going to treat the inductor like a short circuit and the capacitor like an open. Okay, so we're saying I of 0 plus is equal to I L of 0, where I L of 0 is pretty much what we were looking for in Chapter 7. Um, it was the initial condition for the inductor current. Similarly, uh, V of 0 plus is equal to V C of 0. Again, what we were looking for in Chapter 7 when we would do the uh, analyze the RC circuits. Okay, how about for I infinity and V infinity? Here, we're going to analyze the circuit at the final state. And this, again, is like the, the, the step we would take in the RC or RL circuit analysis that we did in Chapter 7, where we would analyze the circuit in that final state, um, treating the inductor like a short and capacitor like an open. Right, and then I infinity is equal to I L infinity. Like this. Okay, now for D I zero plus D T. So that's those rate of change variables we saw earlier. That looked quite different. This is really where it gets a little more tricky. Um, here, so for these values, we're going to use the values that we just found. And the fact that we know these equations um, now. I want to be very careful to clarify that in both of these uh, equations, the VL 0 plus over L, that VL is not the same as the V0 plus that we just found. It's not the same. However, what you could do is you could use KCL or KVL or some other circuit analysis technique in order to find this VL0 plus. Okay, so that's that initial inductor voltage. Um, but, but to be more specific, because it's the 0 plus, it's right after the transition. Okay. I think this will make much more sense when we do some examples. But I do want to clarify, the VL right after the transition is not the same as capacitor voltage V right after the transition. 
Okay, so let's do example one. All right, I'll just move this here. So we want to find, let's say part A is to find the inductor current right after the transition and the capacitor voltage right after the transition. We want to also find the rate of change of the inductor current right after the transition and the same for the capacitor voltage. And part C is to find the final values. And those are pretty easy. Okay, what's the circuit we're looking at? All right, so we have four ohms here, 0.25 Henry. I is the inductor current. Two ohms here. The switch opens at time zero. Um, and then you have 0.1 farads. And the V is the capacitor voltage. Okay, so let's take a look at each step individually. So we'll start with step A. For step A, you want to analyze the circuit in the initial state. So that is, you know, way a long time before the transition, assuming it's in steady state at this point. And that means that you treat inductors like a short and capacitors like an open. And the switch is closed. Um, so that resistor is in the circuit. Okay, so instead of a capacitor, I have an open circuit. Instead of an inductor, I have a short circuit. Okay, and if we do some very straightforward circuit analysis, we can determine pretty easily that the inductor current IL0, which is also equal to I0+, plus, right? We said that the inductor current can change instantaneously, therefore, the inductor current right after the transition is the same as the inductor current right before it. Um, so these are the same. And they are equal to the voltage across both of those resistors, which is 12 volts according to KVL, uh, divided by the resistance. 12 volts divided by 4 plus 2. Because that's... You know, simple Ohm's law, we're going to combine those two resistors in series. That's the equivalent resistance. The 12 volts is across that equivalent resistance. When we apply Ohm's law, we can find the current to be 2 amps. Okay, what about capacitor voltage? Right after the transition is the same as the capacitor voltage right before it. And that voltage is the voltage across the 2 ohm resistor. We could use voltage division to find that. We remember voltage division will have the, the voltage across the series connected resistors times the resistance that you're looking for the voltage on divided by all the resistors added together in series. Um, and so we end up with 4 volts. Okay, then what? Then we say 
Harpy. We're going to analyze the circuit right after the transition. Okay, and because this is happening right after the transition, things are no longer in steady state. A transition has happened, there is stuff changing. We can't assume that the inductor looks like a short or the capacitor looks like an open. So now, I have to redraw the circuit pretty much the way it was before. Except that 2 ohm resistor is no longer part of the circuit because this is right after the transition which means the switch opened. What things do I know? I know that it's a 4 ohm resistor. I also know the inductor current I of 0 plus. We calculated that. I don't know the inductor voltage VL. Uh, do I know I see the capacitor current? I actually do because it's in series with that inductor. So the capacitor current is the same as the inductor current, which we just calculated. Do I know the capacitor voltage? Yes, we just calculated that too. What things are we looking for? We're looking for the DIDT right after the transition and the DVDT right after the transition. Well, let's start with capacitor. We could start with either one. Uh, but we know that IC by inspection is equal to I zero plus. And if we use that formula I gave you way back over here, um, we can re-evaluate our DV zero plus DT to be I C divided by C. And we're saying I C is equal to the inductor current right after the transition, which we just calculated to be two amps. And the capacitance is equal to 0.1 farad. So we get 20 and the unit is volt per second. All right. The IDT. Well, if we use that same equation that we looked at earlier, it looks like this one over here. The rate of change of inductor current is equal to the voltage across the inductor divided by the inductance. However, I don't know what VL is. I don't know that inductor voltage rate after the transition. However, I could do a quick KVL, right? So let's do KVL. What voltages do we have? First, we have a 12 volt rise. Then you have a voltage drop on the resistor. It's equal to the resistance times the current, right? The voltage across the resistor is equal to the resistance times the current through it because of Ohm's law. What's the current through it? The current through it is the same as the inductor current, which we know. We just calculated that to be 2 amps. Um, minus the inductor voltage minus the capacitor voltage. All that is equal to 0. Let's solve for the inductor voltage. 4 times 2 amps plus 4 volts for the capacitor voltage. And if you add that all up, you end up with zero. Therefore, your DIDT is equal to zero divided by the inductance. Doesn't really matter what the inductance was because you'll get zero amps per second. Is that possible? Sure, it's possible. All right, and finally, we'll take a look at the final inductor current and final capacitor voltage. So we'll analyze the circuit in the final state. 
after a long time has passed. This means that now inductors look like short circuits, capacitors look like open circuits, and we no longer have that 2 ohm resistor because the switch has now opened. Okay. Um, by inspection, there's an open circuit, so there can't be any current. And because there's an open circuit and there's no current, all the voltage is across the short. Okay. That's how you would solve uh, one of these problems in Chapter 8.2. This is a more straightforward one, so let's do a couple of more challenging ones. We'll do two more examples. Example two, we're going to say, let's find those same values. So. Inductor current right after transition, capacitor voltage right after transition, um, rate of change of inductor current right after transition, rate of change of capacitor voltage right after transition, sorry that's a T, and final inductor current and capacitor voltage. Okay, now let's take a look. This is a more complex circuit. Okay, so first of all, let's um, try to understand what these sources look like. The voltage looks like it has 4 volts until time 0, at which point it goes to 0 volts. Time and voltage. The current source over here is at 0, and it goes up to 4 uh, at time 0. One thing I do want to emphasize is that we should remember that a voltage source with zero volts looks like a short circuit. However, a current source with zero amps looks like an open circuit, not a short and open. So that's important. Okay, current source, no current through it, open circuit. All right, so for part A, we'll want to analyze the circuit in the initial state. That means that we'll replace inductors with a short and capacitors with an open, and we'll look at it before time zero. So before time zero, you have a four volt source. And the current source looks like an open. Um, we're going to take a look at the initial capacitor voltage, initial inductor current, 
we get. We have a three ohm resistor there. Okay. Now let's do some analysis here. Ultimately, it kind of looks a lot like the circuit we had before in the initial state, where the inductor current right after the transition is equal to the inductor current right before it because inductor currents can't change instantaneously. And the value will be 4 volts divided by the two resistors that are in series. See, so the 3 ohm and the 5 ohm are actually in series because the rest are open circuits, so current can't flow through any of those. So all the current through the 3 ohm is going through the 5 ohm. All right, and we do that math, we get 0.5 amps. Oh, it's not good. Sorry. Okay. Um, then we will look at our capacitor voltage right after the transition, which is the same as the capacitor voltage before it, because it doesn't change instantaneously. Again, we're going to use voltage division. Oh, no. All right. Technical difficulties. Um, 5 ohm goes in the numerator. That's the resistor we're looking to find the voltage across. And we end up with 2.5 volts. Okay. Now let's look at part B, which is, let's say, the more challenging part because it's a new concept. Alright, so here we will look at the circuit after the transition. So that means the voltage source has now gone to zero, and so you replace it with a short. Things are no longer steady state, so you have to model the inductor as an inductor and the capacitor as a capacitor. And now we do have a current source. Current source equal to 4 amps, 5 ohm resistor. In fact, the capacitor voltage is the same, hasn't changed. So that's one thing we know. We also know the inductor current. Uh, and then we know the resistor value here. Okay. So I. Um, want to use those two equations where I say VIDT is equal to VL um, over L and but VL I don't I don't know it and I also want to say DVDT is equal to IC over C I also don't know what IC is but I could use some math to figure that out so let's say let's figure out VL first I'm going to say this guy over here is one loop, and I could do um, KVL at the loop. Okay, if I do KVL on that loop, I'm going to consider voltage drops to be negative. That's just the convention that I use. So, uh, a voltage drop on the capacitor, voltage drop on the resistor, equal to the resistance times the current going through it, which we do know, minus VL. Okay, and then I can solve for VL. Um, and the voltage, of the voltage of the capacitor right after the transition is 2.5 volts. Don't forget the negative. 
minus 3 times the initial inductor current or the inductor current right after the transition which is the same because they can't change instantaneously okay we end up with uh, negative 4 volts and then you can say the IDT right after the transition is equal to VL over L which is equal to negative 4 volts over the inductance which we said was 0.25 all right yep um, and that will give us negative 16 amps per second okay now we'll have to do KCL at this node over here. Oh, that's a fat one. Let's erase that fat thing. Okay. I want a skinny pen. There we go. There we go. Okay. So I'll do that and uh, look at the currents entering and leaving that red node. So let me say, K, C, L, at node, where node is that red circle. Um, we know the currents going into the node are I of zero plus, and 4 amps. The currents leaving that node are IC minus the current going through the 5 ohm resistor. What is that current going through the 5 ohm resistor? It's actually the voltage across that resistor divided by the resistance, right? Because of Ohm's law. And I know the voltage across that resistor because I know the voltage across the capacitor and they are in parallel. So this is really where it becomes a lot of circuit analysis. Nothing too complex, but you just have to be able to see some of these things. Now we can solve for the capacitor current. Um, what do we have? We have this. Inductor current plus the 4 amps from the source minus the resistor current and all that is equal to 0 0.5 plus 4 minus 2.5 divided by 5 is equal to 4 amps and now I can find my dv right after the transition to dvdt to equal to ic over c <coughs> oops and that's equal to 4 amps, because we just found that capacitor current, divided by the capacitance, which, if you look back, it's 0.1 farads. So our answer is 40 volt per second. Okay, finally, we can look at the final state. Finally, get it? Um... That's as time approaches infinity. Again, because time is approaching infinity, we're now assuming that any transient has settled and now you're in steady state. Therefore, the inductors look like a short and the capacitors look like an open. And we're obviously modeling it after the transition so that voltage source looks like a short and you, you have the current source all right so we're going to look at these values here um final inductor current how do we find that
Uh, it's actually equal to uh, negative 4 amps times 5 ohm divided by 3 plus 5 ohm. Why? Um, if we remember, current division allows us to determine the current going through an individual resistor when we know the current going into a parallel branch of resistors. If there are only two branches, then we can simply say the current going in through that into one resistor is equal to the current going into the bran the parallel branch times in the numerator you put the resist the opposite resistor. So not the resistor you're looking for the current through, but the opposite. In this case, the opposite is five ohms, and then you divide by the sum of both of them. Um, so just look back at current division uh, if that um, if that doesn't feel very familiar. Why negative? Well, it's negative because we're assuming the inductor current is going in this direction over here. Um, but the 4 amps is pushing it in the opposite direction. So that's why you have the negative. Okay. You end up with negative 2.5 amps. How about capacitor voltage? Well, now that you know the current through the 3 ohm, by KCL, you're going to know the current through the 5 ohm, right? Well, let's say I 5 ohm is equal to the 4 amps minus, I have negative 2.5 amps, but it's also the polarities going the opposite way. So if I flip the polarity of the inductor current, it would be 2.5 amps. So it's 4 amps minus 2.5 is equal to 1.5. The voltage across that capacitor, that open circuit voltage, is also the voltage across the 5 ohm resistor. Um, and we know this because they're in parallel. So, I'm going to say voltage across the 5 ohm resistor is equal to the current through the 5 ohm resistor times 5 ohms and that's equal to 7.5 volts okay that's example 2 we're going to do one more example So in this example, we're going to look at a few different values. Before, we were only looking at capacitor voltages and inductor currents. Now we're going to look at inductor voltage and resistor voltage. All right, so let's take a look at the actual circuit. All right, um, so let's take a look here because there isn't really like a very methodical way of doing this one. So we'll kind of learn as we go. 
Let's see what we can learn from finding values way before the transition. The transition is of a step function. And because the unit step function, the initial state is zero and the final state is one volt. So let's take a look at the initial state, zero, which is a short circuit. Capacitor looks like an open circuit. Inductor looks like a short. Okay, um, I'm still going to take advantage of the fact that I know that right after the transition, capacitor voltage won't change, inductor current won't change. So I could find resistor voltage, inductor voltage here, but it's not going to do anything. It's not going to tell me anything because inductor voltage could change right after the transition. And... So then it wouldn't help me to know what it was before because it could change to anything. Um, but let's, let's find out what the initial inductor current was. Um, let me say plus. That's equal to I L of zero. And you don't have a source, so you don't have any current. How about the capacitor voltage? Again, you don't have a source, so you don't have any voltage. Okay. Those might help us out, so let's find out. Let's take a look at when, um, it, when you have the circuit right after the transition. Right after the transition, you do have a source. You do model the capacitor. And you do model the inductor. So I know that the inductor current IL of zero is still the same because it can't change. And I know the capacitor voltage is the same because it can't change. So now let's do some, some straightforward math here, um, or, or circuit analysis rather. First of all, I know that the current through that two ohm resistor is the same as the current through the inductor. And the current through the inductor hasn't changed. We found it to be zero amps. So the voltage through the resistor is equal to this inductor current right after the transition times 2 ohms which is equal to 0 0 volts okay what else well let's take a, a look at VL let's see if we can find VL let's call this a loop and say let's apply KVL at that loop Um, we have a voltage rise for the capacitor voltage, a voltage drop, calling, call it VR, and a voltage drop VL. I know the capacitor voltage is zero. I just found the resistor voltage to be zero. I don't know VL, but all that is equal to zero, which tells me VL is equal to zero right after the transition. Okay, well that was not too bad, right? Um, <clears throat> but now still, right after the transition, we wanna look at the rate of change of those voltages. Okay, let's see what we could do about that. Um, actually, I don't like that, I like my red. Let's do a quick 
quick uh, KC, I'll let that note. Okay. Now, uh, for that, we're going to do the following. We're going to, um, essentially, what we could do is we could kind of do a nodal analysis where we apply KCL at the node and call the other side of the, the other side of the circuit will be the reference node. We call that zero volts. So let's do that. Um, the voltage, the node voltage, we know it. We know it's equal to V of zero. So if we're assuming all the currents are leaving that node, then you'd have VC of zero plus, which is the node voltage, minus the, vo uh, the voltage of the source, one volt, all over one ohm. I would assume current is leaving. And you also have IC and you have this current here. So plus some value IC plus the current leaving the node through the resistor and inductor, which is that inductor current. Okay, I can now solve for the capacitor current. And then, and we might be asking ourselves why, but thinking ahead, I know I could find the capacitor DVVT that way. And I'm gonna show you guys a pretty neat trick with that. So what do we have? Okay. Um, negative inductor current is zero minus, and then capacitor voltage is zero minus one over one, so it's equal to one. It's equal to one amp. Okay, and now we're saying capacitor DVDT right after the transition is equal to IC over C, which is equal to one amp over the capacitance, what was the capacitance? 0.1 farad, again. That's equal to 10 volt per second. Okay. I actually can find out what the uh, DVDT for the resistor is. Right? So how do we do that? Again, this is a sort of tricky problem because you have to really think. But I think you would agree with me, due to Ohm's law, that this would be the rate of change of the resistor. That if you have V equal to IR, if you take the derivative on both sides, it's, a, it's an equation, they're equal. So if you take the derivative on both sides, it's still equal. That's what we just did. Um, now the DIDT of the resistor is also equal to the DIDT of the inductor because they're in series. Okay. So IR is equal to IL. Therefore, the derivative of IR is equal to the derivative of IL. And the derivative of IL because of the equation we know, V is equal to L D I D T. We could redraw this. R is equal to little V L all over L. And so again, you have to really just apply all these different concepts that we've learned over the last two classes. And by classes, I mean full courses, not just lectures. Um, okay, so what's our R value? Our R is 2 ohms. VL we found as part of one of the initial values over here. Um, and so that's equal to 0 volts divided by L. It doesn't even matter whatever L is because it's going to be equal to 0. 0 volts per second. 
Okay. And I'd say the kind of weirdest part of this is that you could say KVL across that same green loop. Across that same green loop. Um, you can, instead of using the capacitor voltage, resistor voltage, inductor voltage, you could use the rate of change of all those voltages in that KVL equation. I'm sorry. Okay, let me double check. Positive, negative, negative, okay. Um, I know that this is equal to 10 minus 0 equal to GVL. So it's equal to 10 volt per second. Like this. Okay. Again, I'd say take a look at, you know, this maybe recording or the math that was done to convince yourself of the steps and that you would be able to replicate them. Because I, I will say that it, a lot of these things require you to say, oh, well, I know this, so I know this, so I know this. Last step was to find the final values. That requires us to draw the circuit in the final state. Uh, but when you draw it in the final state, the capacitor gets modeled as an open. Inductor gets modeled as a short. And because the inductor gets modeled as a short, what's the voltage across the short circuit? It's equal to zero. So that's a pretty easy one. That's by inspection. And the voltage across the resistor you define with voltage division. And that is that. 0.667 volts. So that's how you can use the fact that Inductor currents don't change instantaneously and capacitor voltages don't change instantaneously. You can use those facts to then um, be able to find voltages and rates of change of voltages of a bunch of pretty much any other value um, using those same, you know, the knowledge of, of, of those facts. So... I recommend you take a look at these examples a few more times. Uh, the book has good examples as well. And uh, make sure you understand how to do this because this will prepare us for the next few sections in Chapter 8, which will require some of these concepts. All right. Thank you very much for